Hey guys, happy Wednesday. I am glad to have you back. Today we're gonna go ahead and look at chapter seven, section four, um, the second part. Yesterday we focused on operations of functions, so we were able to take two functions and add them to create a new function, or subtract them, or multiply, or divide. The cool thing is, is you can actually do what's called a composition of functions as another way of creating a whole new function. When you're doing a composition, what you do is you take one function and you actually put it into the other function. So here's a little visual, okay? So it says a composition function is created when one function is substituted into another function. So here's an example. If f of x is 3x plus 2 and g of x is x plus 5, if they want you to find this function, okay, whatever's on the outside, I call this the skeleton and the guts, because for me, that's just kind of what makes sense. Whatever's on the outside, that's the skeleton. So F, I would keep the three and the plus two. Where the variable is, that's where you fill in the guts. And the guts is the G function, which is X plus five. So that's what they show you. They kept the three and the plus two. Where the variable is, remember your variable is your letter, they plug in the entire g of x function. Now you would distribute three times x is how they got three x. Three times five is 15. You still have the plus two at the end. Combine the like terms. 15 and two are both constants. 15 plus two is 17. So you can take the g function, put it, into the f function and get a whole new function. You can also go the other way. If I have it written like this, this time the g function is on the outside, the f function is what's gonna be filled in. So where I have my variable, that's where the new function is gonna be. I keep the plus five the same. Where the x is, they want you to fill in, these are the guts, Fill in your f function, which is 3x plus 2. So notice this went where x was. I still have the plus 5. Now you combine like terms. 2 plus 5 is 7. So we were able to do what's called a composition. You put one function into another to create a whole new function. One thing that's really cool, just like I can take the f function and fill it into the g, or I can take the G function and fill it into the F. If you start looking down here for like C and D, you can take the F function and fill it into itself. And you can take the G function and fill it into itself. And so you'll kind of see how this works. I think this is super fun, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and do this. Whatever's on the outside, I call that the skeleton, okay? That's the frame of the problem. So for A, we are taking the F function. But instead of x, what you replace is the variable. So f, which is on the outside, it's our setup, it's x squared. So the power of two will stay, but instead of x, we are going to fill in the g of x function, which is two x plus three. So two x plus three, when in the location of x, in the f function. Now you go ahead and we're gonna take the skills that we practiced at the beginning of 7.4, what we did yesterday. If you have a power of two, that means you have two of them. And yesterday, we looked at how you can take two functions and multiply them together to make a new function. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here. So I'm gonna take the two X, distribute it into every term of the second group. Number times number, add up the letters. 2 times 2 is 4. 1x and 1x gives me 2x's. Now the 2x goes to the 3. 2 times 3 is 6. This term has an x. This does not. So together it's 1. So now I'm done with the 2x. Now I bring the 3 over. 3 times 2 is 6. This term does not have an x. This term does. So together they have 1. 3 times 3 is 9. Now you want your answer in standard form, combine any like terms. The highest exponent is 4x squared. These two terms are considered like terms because they both have a single x. 6x plus 6x makes 12x plus 9. 
So we did a composition function and we created a whole new function. 4x squared plus 12x plus 9 is your final answer. Let's look at going in reverse. So this time I'm taking the g function, okay? So the g function, I have 2, then I have x plus 3. Notice the 2 stays and the plus 3 stays. Where x is, that's where you fill in the f of x function, which is x squared. So this function went into the x location for g of x. Now if I multiply 2 times x squared is 2x squared plus 3, this problem I'm actually done because I can't combine those. This has two x's, this doesn't have any. Now here's one where you get to fill in a function into itself. So again, you always look at the outside. The outside is f. So I have x squared. I'm going to replace x with whatever's inside the parentheses. And this time it's f of x. So I'm going to put x squared in where the x was. So again, the outside was f. So x squared. We keep the power of 2 where x is. We're going to replace it with whatever's in the parentheses. What's in the parentheses is f of x, and f of x is x squared. Properties of exponents that we just looked at in the last chapter, or sorry, the beginning of this chapter. If you have a single base, like we do here, we have an x. If you have exponent inside and outside of parentheses, you multiply them. So 2 times 2 is 4. That would be your answer. Here's another one where you get to put the function into itself. The outside is a g. So you take the g function and you just leave room where the x is to fill in another function. What I'm filling in is the g function. So the g function is 2x plus 3. So we actually put the g function into the g function. To cancel the parentheses, you distribute 2 times 2x is 4x, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 3. I can combine like terms. I have 4x, 6 plus 3 is 9. So there's a full set of examples. I gave you an f of x and a g of x. We filled g into f. We filled f into g. You filled f into itself. You filled g into itself. But just to make sure we've got it, we're going to go ahead and do another set. Okay. So this is our second day on 7.4. This time it's a little bit lengthier of a process. I want to make sure that I do a couple that are challenging just to make sure we really understand. When they say f of x, you're going to use x squared plus x minus 2. Now notice f of x has two variables. So if this is the skeleton function, if it's the one on the outside, we're going to have to fill the guts into two different spots here because there's two x's. Whenever they say g of x, you're going to put in x plus 1. Okay, so A, we have the F function is the guts. So wherever there's a variable, you're going to leave room to fill in another function. So instead of the X, we're leaving room to fill in a function. You still have the power of 2. We still have plus. Oh, there's an X. Leave room to fill in a function. We still have our minus 2. Now you look in the parentheses. What are you filling in? G of X g of x is x plus 1. So x plus 1 goes here and x plus 1 goes there. x plus 1 goes wherever we originally just had an x. If you have a power of 2 on a binomial, what that means is that you have two of them. So this power of 2 means I have x plus 1 twice. Now you multiply them. So we're going to distribute. x times x is x squared x times 1 is 1x. Done with the x, now I go ahead and I bring in the 1. 1 times x is 1x. 1 times 1 is 1. Plus x plus 1 minus 2. Okay, I wasn't distributing anything here because I didn't have parentheses. Your final answer, combine any like terms and make sure that you have it in the right order. Right order means the highest exponent needs to go first. The highest exponent I see is a 2, so x squared goes first. x is 1x plus 1x plus 1x is 3x. Constants, 
I have a 1 plus a 1, which makes 2, minus 2. 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 minus 2 is 0, so here is my new function. So this one was kind of a challenging question because you had to fill g of x into f of x two times. We ended up multiplying. We had to combine like terms. So this is about as challenging as, as this will get. So if you followed along with this question, feel really, really good. You're going to be just fine in this section. Okay. We're going to go ahead and do our last three examples. So this says, and this one I won't need too much paper, take the g function, whatever's on the outside, so where x is, I need to leave room to fill in another function. What am I putting in that location? f of x. f of x is x squared plus x minus 2. There's nothing to distribute. There's no exponent. So all I have to do for my final answer is go ahead and combine like terms. The highest exponent I see is a 2. There's only one term with an x. That comes next. Now these two are like terms because they're both numbers that do not contain a letter. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, and you're done. So one thing, hopefully, that you notice, sometimes these compositions are a little bit of work, and they take some time. Other times, you guys, they're so fast. Like, B was really fast. Now, C is going to be kind of a stinker. Okay, let's check this out. The outside is F. So notice F is where I had two variables. So I need to leave room where those two variables were so I can fill in another function. What am I filling in? Well, I'm filling in the f of x function. So f of x, x squared plus x minus 2, that has to go in each set of parentheses. So I am replacing the single x with the function f of x. This power of 2 means that I have this group being multiplied by itself. I have two of them, plus x squared plus x minus 2 minus 2. The reason why I did not need the parentheses around here anymore, I don't have an exponent and I'm not distributing anything, so this function is still here, but there's nothing I need to do to eliminate the parentheses. Here, though, this is going back to multiplying our two functions together. So I have to take x squared and bring it to all three terms. 2x's and 2x's. Remember, you're adding up the letters. I have 4. 2x's and 1x. So now I have 3. 2x's times negative 2 is negative 2x squared. Done with x squared. Now you're going to give every term one more x. 1x and 2x's make 3x's. 1x and 1x makes 2x. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. Now I'm done with the x. Now I multiply all the terms in the set of parentheses with negative 2. Negative 2 times x squared is negative 2x squared. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So now the parentheses are gone. But what I need to realize is that I still have x squared plus x minus 2 minus 2. Those did not go away. They just were not in the parentheses. They are still here for your final answer. And this is, this is a long problem, guys, but you know how to do this. I promise. Just take it one step at a time. For your final answer, you have to combine like terms. So you start off by looking for the highest exponent. The highest exponent that I see is x to the power of 4, so that has to go first. Now, x to the power of 3. Here's a term with x to the power of 3, and here's a term with x to the power of 3. Add the numbers in the front. 1x cubed plus 1x cubed is 2x cubed. Done with that, done with that. This has 2x's, this term has 2x's, this term has 2x's, and this term has 2x's. There's four of them. You're just going to combine the numbers in the front. So negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Minus 2 more is negative 3. Plus 1 more is negative 2x squared. You just combine the numbers in the front. X is negative 2x and negative 2x is negative 4x plus 1x. Negative 4x plus 1x is negative 3x. Done with the x's. Now your constants. Remember, your constants are just your numbers. That means that they do not have a variable. 4 minus 2 is 2. Minus 2 more is 0. Here is your final answer. 
This is like a challenge question. So if you were able to follow that, give yourselves a really big pat on the back. In fact, give yourselves a big hug. Okay, you rock that. This is considered a challenge question for what we're doing. This is as hard as it will get. One more question. This one's not too bad, I promise. The outside is a G function. Okay, so here's our G function. Where the variable is, you leave a place to fill in another function. So where X is, I left room. What I'm putting in that location is G of X. G of X is X plus 1. Yes, it's in parentheses right now because you filled in a function. But I don't have to do anything to eliminate these parentheses. I don't have a power of 2 or any exponent. I'm not distributing. So I do not need the parentheses. All I'm doing for part D is just combining like terms. So I have X, 1 plus 1 is 2. So guys, that is compositions of functions, being able to take one function and put it into another function to create a whole new function. Super fun stuff on this Wednesday. I hope you guys are doing well. Take care, and I can't wait to talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.